by Herky and Milton's friends. This is Herky and Milton's dad, and today I'm taking over the channel. Things are going to be very, very tactical, pragmatic, careful today as I'm taking over the channel. We're going to be discussing how to keep your dogs safe in LA or in California with all these new predators around that we're experiencing. So I'll go into the details about everything, <laughs> but we're going to be reviewing some products today and I'll be telling you guys a story about something that happened that was extremely scary. Okay guys, so let's just to give you a brief info. If you follow Herky the Cavalier, you know that mo most of the time we live in Montreal. Now, for the winter time, we've relocated to LA for a few months. And being new in LA, we've had to encounter and learn about a whole new different set of threats against Herky and Milton's lives that normally in Montreal, we would never be exposed to. What are those threats? Coyotes that kill dogs, predatory birds like hawks that kill dogs, rattlesnakes, and other predators that I don't even know of yet, but Bob we're gonna cats. be focusing Bobcats. <laughs> yeah, mine's behind the camera today. So she might say some stuff. Listen to her camera. Bobcats as well. Alright. Those are animals that we never even remotely think about living in Montreal. But over here, we have so many friends and we've heard so many stories of people losing their small dogs to these predators. So knowing me, the most paranoid, overprotective dog dad in the world, I've decided to take every precautionary measure possible to limit the risk that Herky and Milton are exposed to, okay? Okay guys, to give you a context to this video, I'm going to tell you a story about what happened to Herky and Milton here two weeks ago. So, about two weeks ago, at around 11 p.m. at nighttime, it gets very dark here. I knew about the threats of coyotes, so I was already on my guards a bit, but I didn't really take it seriously. So what happens is that usually I'll go out at nighttime with my cell phone. So I took my cell phone and it was extremely windy so I couldn't hear anything. And it was very dark too. I take my cell phone and I go out here like this and I flash the lights here just to see if there's any threats of coyotes. Not thinking that there would be any because we're in West Hollywood. Like Santa Monica is right there. There's Trader Joe's right there. There's a huge street. We're in a very urban environment. My cell phone. I start flashing the light like this. Here. Business as usual. There's nothing. I look in here. Nothing. Then I turn the corner right here and I flash into this bush here. And out of nowhere, okay, this coyote <gasps> this big. I'm thinking it's a youth coyote. He was like this big. He jumps out like this. He looks at me dead in the eyes, and then he sprints over there. And I'm like, oh shit, a coyote! And I run inside and I tell my, I'm like, there's a coyote outside. There's a coyote outside in our yard. Now, let me take you around the yard. Gate. Six foot fence and bushes. Six foot fence all around. And then neighbor's house, another six foot fence to stop it. So how did the coyote gun get in? I don't know, but apparently they could jump six foot fences like this. So a fence, it's good psychologically for you, but a coyote, it's not an obstacle. So the next day, I was so paranoid about this coyote that what did I do? First thing I did was I searched up how to uh, scare away coyotes. Air horns is number one. Bear spray. But I really wanted to take things in my own hands more. So what did I do? I went on Amazon. Guys, be ready. And I bought this. A machete that you bring for while camping. And we got a super bright LED flashlight that I'm going to use every evening to secure the premises before Herky and Milton steps out at nighttime. So for your own backyard and front yard, this is what I would suggest you do before you bring out your dogs on a leash, always on a leash at nighttime. Let's go. Quick reminder, that day where I saw the coyote, I had gone out before the girls. So I always step out first to secure the premises. That's when I saw the coyote. So even with a flashlight and a machete, I would strongly recommend that you step out first and secure the premises 
before your dogs come out, even if they're on a leash. So this is what I do. This is my night procedure to secure the premises. I'll have a flashlight and I'll go through every single bush with the pointed tip of the machete pointing ahead and I will poke through every bush like so to make sure that there are no hiding predators inside any of the bushes that will eat your dog. So I'll go through every single bush like so. Making sure to make a lot of noise while you do this. Coyote, come out. Coyote, come out. And you want to flash the flashlight everywhere. Make sure you check every corner. Okay? So after you've done that, only then should you go inside and take your dogs out for their final pee or poo of the day on a leash. Okay guys, so that secures the part for your own front and back lawn. But as you know, we love to do outdoor activities with the girls. We always go to Runyon Canyon. If you refer back to all our videos of us at the Runyon Canyon with Herky and Milton off leash, well, um, in retrospect, that was a bad idea. They might have fun, but there are so many predators around the, those areas that we're now only uh, getting familiar with. Now, there are hawks that could come from above and their claws are so strong they could take a small dog like Milton easily and just fly away and eat your dog somewhere. There are coyotes that we've heard stories about. People just having their small dog at the canyon. The dog runs off to do something and then just vanishes. So there are coyotes. In the summertime, there could be rattlesnakes that we spoke about. My goal here is to reduce the risk to a maximum of Herky or Milton getting harmed by a predator. So what I did was I went online and I researched up vests that are anti-coyote vests, you could say, or protective vests. And I found this brand called Coyote Vest. They're located in San Diego and Maya is laughing her butt off. Girls, okay, listen to me very carefully. This might sound funny, but it's not funny when your dog dies from a coyote attack, okay? So you might laugh, but there's an underlying serious issue. Okay, so this company is called Coyote Vest. We're not sponsored by them or anything like that. We wish. <laughs> I just saw it online. And the owners of this company, they're in San Diego. They, they lost one of their dog to a coyote attack and they wanted to just invent a vest that's gonna reduce the chances of your dog getting harmed if a coyote ever attacked them. So. How much did you spend on that? I spent $343 for two outfits that will fit Herky and Milton. So they have matching outfits, which is cute. <laughs> but if you guys see this outfit, there's nothing cute about it. So did you buy this in order to walk them at night or to go on the canyon or what is it? No, so I got this specifically for our uh, daily treks. So when you go on treks with your dogs, either you keep them on the leash, which is most likely what we're gonna do, a uh, six foot leash. Or if you wanna let them off leash and you know have them venture around a bit more, at least you want to give them more protection than just their soft furry flesh that they're just walking around like, you know, big preys out there. Look at those preys. Don't they look like preys with that waggy tail? I'll tell you guys how a coyote attacked, okay? A coyote will hide and the first place that it will bite will be here on the neck to kill the prey. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna bite here and it's gonna shake very hard to try to break the prey's neck. So what we want to do is we want to secure this area first, most important, and then the vest is going to cover the rest of their body in case the coyote had missed this part and tries to bite here. Now, however, the hawks, when they come down, their claws could hook into any areas of the pet. So what I did was I purchased the coyote vest and I added a uh, an add-on, which is like a hawk protection layer, which is two extra layers of Kevlar. We'll go through all that in a sec. Now, usually Mai is the one that dresses them up, so I might require her help because I don't have much experience in this field, but let's unbox this. <laughs> Mai's already laughing. Okay, guys, so what do we have here? I'll go through the purchase order, okay? First, we have the coyote vest, which is very well wrapped. 
and I'm gonna unwrap it first and then we'll go through it after. Girls, this is not treats. Oh, they love to unbox. Oh god. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> what the? <laughs> sure, he's poor face. Harky, what's all this? What's all this? Oh, built on the little vest. This is some heavy metal stuff. But it's plastic, it's hard plastic. What's the Kevlar? It's this? This is Kevlar? So the whole, the vest is lined with Kevlar. Mm. And then this is an extra piece of Kevlar. Okay guys, we're gonna go through the purchase order. Everything's on the website, so you can go on the website and you can check out in detail the product descriptions and whatnot. But I'll just go through it quickly. First, we bought two coyote, I bought two coyote vests, which are these. So the coyote vests, they have, they're lined with Kevlar. And you know, I have another company that we do goalie mask and the, our best goalie masks are made out of Kevlar and bulletproof vests uh, for cops are made out of Kevlar as well. This is a Kevlar lined vest and Kevlar is supposed to be anti-bite. So if another dog or an animal bites your dog, this is supposed to stop their teeth from piercing through your dog's flesh. It's both, they have two. Pieces. So that straps around their neck. Yeah. How do you call this? Uh, Buckle? Yeah, so the Coyote vest comes with a buckle and I think they have another model that comes with a Velcro. I think it's called the Spike Vest, but obviously if a Coyote is attacking your dog, you want the vest to stay on as much as possible. So I chose to go with the buckle since it's more solid on, their dog, on the dog's body. On the neck area, you have this protective neck guard that have spikes on it. <laughs> it looks extremely, extremely menacing. Even I'm intimidated by this, but these are uh, sharp plastic pieces, okay? They're not metal. Not that it changes anything, it's still pretty hard to the feel. I don't think it's gonna cause any injury, but I guess if your dog runs really fast and scratches you, you could get mildly hurt. But this is what you need to protect them against coyotes. After that, I added these, which is called the Hawk Shield which attach, attaches to the vest, okay? And the Hawk Shield is two extra layers of Kevlar. In case a hawk comes from the skies and grabs your dog, this protective measure is meant to, to detach itself like this so that if your dog's in the air, he could fall down and you can save him. And it's also gonna prevent the hawk's claws from really injuring your dog in a serious manner. Basically, when uh, an animal attacks your dog, you are trying to, to gain as many seconds as possible before you can intervene and try to, you know, save your pet. So, with this thing here, if a hawk comes down, gets your dog, your dog falls, you might have the time to intervene two, three seconds that might save your dog's life. And then lastly, you got the coyote whiskers. So these whiskers are just... <laughs> It's a very soft <laughs> plastic, okay? And Is there two pieces? Or we just have one? It's supposed to have two. Oh, they're just stuck together? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> this is really is just to create an, an illusion. Okay, so when a coyote... The philosophy is that when a coyote attacks your dogs, he's gonna look twice <laughs> at this thing and go... He's gonna go, what the f*** is this? Is it a porcupine? Is this some sort of hellraiser? He's gonna have less of a tendency of opening his mouth and sticking his face into something like this. So if your dog is running around like so in nature, the coyote is gonna be like, uh, what the f I don't want to injure my face by biting that thing. So it's gonna dissuade him from biting into your dog. <laughs> Basically, that's what I read. The coyote does not want this to stick into his eye and mouth. Okay, Herky and Milton are gonna be very secure with their full kit of coyote vest. And lastly, I, I added this extra collar protection. Is it a collar though? Yeah, you just go like this. That doesn't fit them. Or unless this goes on top and then this is- No, the collar w was just that piece, right? I thought I added some neck guards. 
Oh. Okay, so Dad, how about your challenge now is to put that whole suit on Milton and show us what it Hold looks on, like. I need to figure out my, my pieces first. Okay. I feel like my boys are about to go play some hockey and I'm preparing their equipment. By the way, I just want to say hello to Romeo's mom. She's the one that had pointed this outfit out to us last year because she wants Milton to be protected for Romeo. So you put the spikes on. And then you have the Hellraiser piece. I guess we're gonna go in the middle. Why did it just fall off? After when we're done, we're gonna go knock at the neighbor's house when they have their outfits on and we're gonna show them. Like one here. Guys, don't you find it so cute that they have matching colors? <laughs> uh, uh, Hecky! No! Did she just break her teeth? This one is from here. This one is for here. I do have a concern about these sharp metal pieces since Milton and Herky are so close to each other all the time. So that's a legit concern of mine. But our plan is that when they go in the car, we'll take this off. Only when they get to the park, I'll carry this in my backpack and put it on them once we're on the mountain. And guys, I don't care if you laugh at Herky and Milton because if ever a coyote gets to them, Nobody's laughing, okay? So they might look a bit funny with this piece of them, <laughs> but it's gonna save their life, possibly. So laugh all you want, but it's not funny. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> okay, I have to give it to mom because mom knows how to do this best. Okay, so dad is full of good intentions here, but he's pretty useless as put at putting clothes on the girls. We all have our strengths and weaknesses, right? So I'd like to mention that Thank God dad has nighttime duty. I always have the morning shift and Andy has the nighttime shift. So he takes them out at night for the night <laughs> for the nightly potty. And I'm usually much more liberal with my parenting. And I usually, honestly, like I'm not, I'm not proud of it, but I usually just open the door. It's all gated. So I just usually just open the door. I let them run outside, but... Andy kept telling me like, please be careful, don't let them out, just like that. Look at the yard before you head out. I did not listen, but thank God it was you and not me. I would have freaked out if I saw Coyote. The thing with Mai is that she's not very good in situations of uh, crisis. So she probably just, she would stand there and just scream or cry or something. Oh, I'm sorry baby, come here. Can I just say how funny Herky's face is while you put this on her. She looks like Dracula, right? She looks hilarious. <laughs> Milton looks like some sort of Superman dog from hell. Look guys, okay, they are way too cute to be in nature with predators around them. Look at Herky's face, she's falling asleep right now. So a few people have voiced the concern that they think it's a bit odd that this vest does not close in the back. Yeah, it's true, it's not perfect. Like this should have another strap or something. Technically, yes. So as you guys can see, Herky looks a lot more menacing with that on her back. Oh my gosh, it looks like a dinosaur. Then with <laughs> <laughs> dinosaur. Then with her bare fur and white white floof just going around. Right now, if I was a predator, I would think a second or five more about attacking Herky. So you see here, guys. You see at the neck area here, there's these spikes that if a coyote goes in for the neck. This is gonna bite back at it, so it might think twice and it might let go of its bite since it has this poking through its throat, okay? And if the coyote wants to bite in the back here, there are all these spikes here to prevent it or just to dissuade it a bit more.
my first impressions regarding this vest, because I put a lot of clothes on Hurricane Milton, is that, first of all, I thought that if I was a predator, I wouldn't go for the top. I'd go for the bottom right here. And this part is all exposed. So I thought maybe we can use one of the spiky things and put it on the front too. I would be thinking that they need some sort of protection here. Also, it's not, since it's Kevlar, it's really, really hard. So on smaller dogs, it might not be the most comfortable thing. And this doesn't seem to hug them very well. So that's another concern of mine. And also the fact that the rest of the vest here is not really adjusted to the body. So I would like to see maybe a second strap or something. Are those things we could add on? I don't know. And yeah, I don't know how well it'll stay on and everything, but there is a harness hook right here so that you can keep them on a leash still. But I think this looks like a really good dinosaur suit. I, I think like Milton finally realized her dream of being a dinosaur. Milton, are you a dinosaur? I have to tell another story. So I want to tell you guys an another story. We went to a uh, Cavalier meetup this weekend. This wonderful couple, they told us a story about how they lived in San Diego for over 17 years, okay? They've always had small dogs, but four years ago, just this one morning, 5 a.m., they opened the door like usual, like every morning. Their Cavalier runs out and their two other small dogs runs out. Okay, so mine made me move because the lighting is nicer on this side. So anyhow, the three dogs, they run out, 5 a.m., business as usual, and he just hears this horrible screaming sound. And he runs out right away, and he sees two of his dogs lying on the floor, and the other one, the third one, all bit in the face. A coyote jumped their six-foot fence and got to the two small dogs. He went to the small dogs because he was yelling, so the coyote ran away. He picked up his dogs, and his dogs died in his hands with blood running down his arms and he says that the, the, the throat was open and then the dog's head was just it was like hanging it was like it was the most horrific story that you could think of okay two of your dogs dying in your hands with their blood on you so from then we were like oh my god this is a serious issue and then they were also the couple that warned us be very careful at the Runyon Canyon uh we've been watching your videos it looks like they have a lot of fun but I would personally never let my dogs off leash at the Runyon Canyon since our dog got killed by coyotes. And then we heard stories about people going to the dog park and just bringing their dogs back to the car, a small dog. They were putting the dog into the car, coyote jumped up, took the dog from their hands, ran away, and never we never saw the dogs again. Same thing for the Hollywood Hills here. We were hanging out in Beverly Hills yesterday and this girl that we met, she was just talking, she's a dog owner as well. She said that her friends just left the dogs uh, on their own in the backyard. They went out, played by the pool. Next thing you know, the dogs are gone and they're dead sure that some coyotes got to the small dogs. So with all this said, the next video, we're going to go to Runyon Canyon, back to our spots with Herky and Milton wearing their suits. We're going to give you guys an honest opinion about how we think it works in nature. Honestly, I think we're gonna go trekking with them on a six-foot leash, but I don't know. We're gonna test it out for sure. <laughs> we did spend $350 on this. It seems secure. We usually go in the daytime. There's a lot of, you know, ifs, ifs that are pros on our side, but we're gonna make sure that, you know, they're just properly secured if ever. Okay, so we wanted to thank um, Lisa and Gary for warning us about the coyote situation. We always, we also met their pups, which are so adorable. They have two Cavaliers now. There's Mabel Grace and Eleanor Rigby. So hi girls, we wanted to say hi. It was great to meet you and we hope we see you at the next meetup. So thank you for warning us about this. Okay guys, so just to end this on a more positive, funny note, we're gonna go knock at the neighbor's house with Herky and Milton looking like dinosaurs and we're gonna get her first real reaction like her honest reaction let's go go girl come on at least milton's walking go go girl come on Herky. go is Herky okay she's good those things walking it's, it's a bit too big i didn't adjust it can you adjust Herky's? I want to get your first reaction. What oh. is that? <laughs> Hi, Fabio. <laughs> what do you think? Oh my goodness, you look so scary. So, if you were a coyote, would you want to bite them still, or oh is that I would confusing? Never mess with them. Right? 
Yes. <laughs> oh, they look like little mini raptors. Yeah. They look like dinosaurs, right? Yeah, well, I'm trying to figure what they look like. Or they like, look like something. a goth or something. Goth. <laughs> they look very heavy metal, I was saying. Yes. How, how fitting with your t-shirt? Is that why you're wearing Metallica today? Yeah, just kind of move around, huh? Yeah. This is a bit loose. So are you, about to, are you going to put that on them every time you go out to take them to a party?